All right, everybody, it's Tom, your sleazy used car dealer here. I'm with Buxton Auto, and today's video is going to be a compare and contrast or a pro and con to buying a used car from a used car dealer versus an individual that you met on Marketplace or Craigslist or OfferUp or one of those. Now, when I say used car dealer, I'm talking about people like me that sell cars that are 15 or so years old, maybe 20 even. And these cars generally are, in my case, four to $6,000 vehicles. So what are pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages to using a dealer like me versus sourcing the car on your own? Um, let's get to it. Man, I'm trying to figure out how close to the camera I need to sit. As it turns out, everything from here down is belly. Belly. So if I sit comfortably like this, I look like Jabba the Hutt and I got four chins. But anyway, that's not what's important. What we're talking about now is why would or wouldn't you buy from a used car dealer? Uh, so I've got five, five-ish so points I wrote down I wanted to talk about briefly. I think one of the main things, and I think it's a little bit uh, ill-gotten or not accurate, is that the trust level is not there with a used car dealer. I put ads on Marketplace all the time. That's part of my business model. Same with Craigslist. And I always identify, you know, Buxton Auto is located at blah, blah, blah. If you can post a phone number, I post a phone number. I put our hours. And I always have the last photo be a picture of my building and uh, print over the top with my name, my address, my email, all my contact information. Because I know that there is a segment of the population that honestly is just, they don't trust us, man. They just, they think that we're all sleazy, which is a term I've kind of used often, but I don't, I don't mean it literally. They think we're all sleazy people out to screw you over. And in general, that is not the case. So before I was a licensed dealer, I would buy and sell a lot of cars out of my driveway. I can tell you that when I would buy these cars, I have been misled by individuals selling cars just as much as used car dealers selling cars. I bought a Ford truck from, from a dealership once and uh, I drove it uh, home, and by the time I got home, that gas engine sounded like a diesel, just chattering away. My own fault, I had a choice, I had an option to go take the car and get it checked out, I chose not to. I bought a nice X5 BMW, and I sent my uncle down to the auction to pick it up for me, and he has his little checklist he goes through when he picks up auction cars, you know, fluids and so forth, tires up, lights work, calls me halfway from the auction house to my shop and says, hey guy, uh, this one ain't gonna make it. I'm like, what do you mean? You like it? You gonna keep it or what? He goes, no, no, it ain't gonna make it. It's knocking, it's knocking bad. I've already pulled off. You better call a wrecker to come get me. Hmm, okay. But I've bought cars from individuals. Is the check engine light on? Oh no, the check engine light on, there's no problem. And then when I get there and I scan it, I see that the monitors haven't run, meaning they either cleared the codes or they disconnected the battery and then plugged it back in. And you get, oh yeah, uh, I had to take the battery out and put it in my son's car. Sure. Or hey, this doesn't seem to shift right. Oh, it's just, a, it's just a sensor. No. Let me just tell you, and you can choose to believe me or not believe me, private sellers will lie to you just as much or more than a used car dealer will. Bottom line. There is no rule that says a individual seller is going to be more honest. And my experience has shown me that they're not. So if it's a trust issue with used car dealers, 
I would say your trust issue is probably with that person that is at the dealership that you are speaking to. And it shouldn't be with us used car dealers globally because a lot of us, most of us are just good people trying to make a living. So I think that's the first thing is you have that trust issue when dealing with used car dealers. And I believe it's unfounded. And I hope you'd consider maybe giving a dealer a, a, a chance. All right, this is effing perfect. So just in between takes of the video, going from one thought to the next, the shop's phone rings. It's a repeat customer. He was looking at buying a Saab from a friend of his, and the friend only bought it yesterday. Not a good sign. He sent me a picture of this Saab. He was asking questions about it, and then uh, he called with a question about an error that it showed in the gearbox, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, bud, how good of a friend is this? This, this car is going to need some work. He goes, oh, well, it's not her fault. She just bought it yesterday. I said, interesting. Where did she buy it? He goes, oh, she got it from some lady over in Saxe, which is a community close to ours. Well, the funny story is, two days ago, I had gotten food poisoning or a stomach virus or something from my little grandson. My wife was knocked on her butt. I was knocked on her butt. I worked about a half a day struggling in front of the computer and I found as I cruised through Marketplace looking for cars, this red sob. I emailed or messaged the guy and his answer of course was, well, you gotta come right now. He was really persistent that you had to come now. It was important. I said, dude, I'm, I'm getting over the flu or something. I'm, I'm not coming. So the next day, after I went home and slept for about 24 hours, I see that he's changed it to sold. So why this is funny to me, or, or sad, is that they presented this car as having no issues, everything was great with it, and they wanted this money for it. When in reality, once the car is driven and gets warm, the transmission starts slipping. So that is a perfect example of how independent sellers are not necessarily any more trustworthy than a used car dealer. So there you go. Anyway, what my next point was going to be in the terms of the comparing and contrasting things is uh, if you're going to a car lot, you would get a chance to look at multiple cars within your budget versus having to tool around town looking at four or five different vehicles and taking a lot of time. Uh, the seller is usually somebody's just selling their personal vehicle, so they have one car, whereas a car dealer has two, five, eight, ten that might be in your budget uh, that you can look at all at once. So. That's the, the second pro-con, if you want to call it that. It's just that in general, car dealers have maybe a little bit more selection. And it could theoretically be uh, a little bit quicker. Now, to that point, a lot of people sometimes say that they don't want to buy from the dealer. They just want the title in their hand. And that's not a good thing. Here's why it's not a good thing. I get calls all the time from people that want to sell me a car with a lost title. And the lost title happened like this. They bought the car from somebody, that person signed the title, gave them the title, they left with it, they didn't go to the tax office, they moved, or they got divorced, or they ran out of money, or they got in jail, or they got evicted, or, and what happens is then they have lost the title to the car in the other person's name and they can't get a copy of that title and they can't find that person that they bought the car from. So that's a problem. Other times they want to lie about what they paid for the car in an effort to cheat the tax system. I get that, nobody wants to pay more tax than they have to. And depending on what state you're in, you may not have this, but Texas has what they call presumptive tax value which what that means is you can go in there and say, I paid $500 for this car, but Texas is going to look up the VIN. They're going to know the average sale price and they're going to go, mm, yeah, maybe you did, but the presumptive value is 2,500 and that's what we're going to tax you on. 
So you're not saving tax money by doing that. So just something to think about. When you go to a dealer, the dealer collects your tax title and license. They go to the tax office. They do your paperwork for you. They mail you your license plates, and then your title comes in the mail. Uh, now, we can go down the whole rabbit hole of dealers that don't do that like they should or these stonewalling piece of crap third world country dealers that let all their friends go buy cars on their name and they just hand you a title. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a legitimate used car dealer doing business on his property, doing business the way the state intended. Uh, so it is convenient in that regard that they will handle all that paperwork for you. Another reason you might want to consider going to a used car dealer is, for the most part, the cars are presentable. Have you ever gone to somebody's house, you saw a car on Facebook, they took a picture of it with just stuff in it that looked like a storage unit or looked like they lived in it? You get there only to see that the shit's still in the car. The car is piled high with trash, there's old food in the car, there's spilled coke in the car, there's that bottle of antifreeze in the car that's leaking out on the back. They haven't cleaned up the car. Where rarely does a car dealer not at least get the car cleaned out, get it a quick car wash, maybe vacuum it, get some stains out, maybe do an oil change. If you put your foot on the brakes and the brakes are going, <laughs> they've put front brakes on the car, things like that. So the dealer has made the car presentable. The dealer has made it where you don't have to have a vision to see what the car could be like fixed so to speak. That is part of what dealers do. If you go to the car dealer auction, some of these cars, they are repos. They're picked up from the person that didn't pay for it. They're taken straight to the auction house. Keys, no keys, old cheeseburgers, whatever it is. And it's run through the auction and it's sold. So there's that. There's the people that are pigs, right? There's people in bad parts of town in the middle of the night that maybe have a drug habit that want you to show up with your three thousand dollars in cash and maybe they're going to sell you a car maybe they're going to roll you i don't know so something to consider you know when you're buying from a dealer you're going to a place of business it's well lit it's safe they're regulated people often think that used car dealers are not regulated <clears throat> well every state has a regulating agency Every state has an opportunity for you to file a complaint if you think that dealer had done you wrong. But I will tell you that most every state has an as-is statement. The federal government requires the buyer guide, which tells people that the car is as-is. In Texas, all cars are sold as-is without a written warranty. Person to person or dealer, no, nothing in writing, it's as-is. Another one that I hear often, and it is probably the number one reason I think why people don't want to buy from a used car dealer is price. Oftentimes I hear, I want to say poorly educated or poor people or broke people or rednecks. I'll say, I often hear people say, the car dealer fucks you, man. He's selling that car for $500 more than there's other ones. You're not getting screwed, okay? Car dealers have overhead. We are a business. We provide a service. The service is you can come to our lot in a clean, safe environment. You can look at our cars. You can decide if you want to buy one, and if you do, we'll process your paperwork and give you the car. We have done the legwork of getting the car, of doing some kind of fixing on the car, potentially, getting the car in a better condition than when we bought it, and then making it available to sale to you. So you could call it a con if you buy from a dealer that you may pay a little bit more. You may. You may also not. And here's why. I have noticed in selling and buying hundreds and hundreds of cars, when you go to a dealer and you want to negotiate a lower price, it's a matter of fact discussion. <clears throat> dealer knows what his car is worth, knows if you won't buy it, somebody else will. But he also knows everybody wants to haggle a little. 
So you may get two or three hundred dollars off that car to put in a windshield or to put front brakes or to get it detailed or whatever because everybody wants a little something off. People that message on Facebook for a $5,000 car and tell you $3,500 cash today, that's not going to work. A dealer's not going to take 20, 25% off his car. So you might not be able to negotiate as deeply as you would like to or think that you could with an individual. However, have you ever met a person selling something that thought that what they had, a car, a used washing machine, an old couch, whatever, was worth way more than it was? Maybe they had a 2000 Honda Accord and they felt like their 2000 Honda Accord was worth $8,000, but you could find several examples of 2000 Honda Accords for $4,000. No chance in hell you're negotiating that person down to the true value of that car. Why? Because they feel, emotionally, they feel that their car is worth more. They'll tell you that it's because it was a two-owner car, or because there was no stain in the seat, or because grandma used to own the car, or whatever it is. But buyers, in some cases, are very emotionally attached to the vehicles. And that makes it hard to negotiate with them. So, just something to think about. You don't always get the best price at the used car dealer. You don't. Alright guys, there it is. That's the video. Pretty straightforward. I think that uh, if you can look past some of the stigmas that you may have in your head about us used car dealers, most of us are honest people providing a clean, safe environment to come look and pick out a car. We've done the hard work of finding the car, getting the car cleaned up and ready to sell. And, you know, I think most used car dealers will negotiate just a little bit because that's kind of how the game's played. Uh, I know there's people out there that are going to swear no matter what that we're all scum of the earth and you have the right to think that. But uh, shoot me a comment down below if you want to call me a big fat bald bastard or something like that. I don't care. You want to tell me how terrible your used car buying experience was or tell me that maybe an individual seller did uh, deceive you a little bit. It happens. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you get a chance, a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. I got my pops in town this week coming up, so I probably won't be on here a whole, whole lot, but I will do my best to catch up with you as soon as I can. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a great one.